Boston. And uh, I had this really bad habit. There's this wonderful little two-letter word spelled N-O. And I keep pronouncing it yes. And that's why you're having to listen to me today. I never tell the pastor no. It's just not something that I am comfortable doing. I'd like to welcome everybody here this morning. It is a holiday. You managed to be here in a way. I do appreciate that. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, if you please join me for the opening prayer. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful church we have to worship in. We thank you for all the sharing, caring, and loving people we have to worship with. We thank you that our congregation is growing. We thank you that we have an excellent new pastor. We ask that you would help us to be a shining light in the community of faith and to have a community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning, uh, in the faith we sing, number 2236, Gather Us In.
when I ask a few friends this question, these words surface, comforted, vulnerable, grateful, honored, humbled, awkward, but appreciative. Like someone really cares. Maybe one of the reasons that it's so easy to turn John 17 into a to-do list for the church is that such a list is easier to manage. We're so obviously not in control as we listen to people pray for us. They, not we, are the ones doing the asking. And God, not we, is the one answering prayer. If Jesus were exhorting his disciples, and by extension us, we could strive to meet his expectations then. Rather than obviously not in control as we listen to people pray for us. They, not we, are the ones doing the asking. And God, not we, is the one answering the prayer. If Jesus were exhorting his disciples and by extension us, we could strive to meet his expectations then. When the risen Jesus meets Mary Magdalene near what had been his tomb, he commissions her, Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to the Father and your Father, to my God and your God, my Father and your Father. In the resurrection, the relationship that the Son and the Father have always shared now extends to those for whom he prayed before his death, for you. And these concluding verses of the prayer that make up John 17, Jesus says that the purpose of all he has asked for in the preceding verses is this, that all disciples of all time may be one in a specific sense in which Jesus and the Father are one. The mutual indwelling of love that has defined the relationship, not only in the life of Jesus, but also in the oneness of God and the created world from before the foundation of the world. Jesus prays for his own, the one present and those and the ones who will believe in him through them, which means we can read it as a prayer for us. We draw into the love of the Father and the Son, Jesus. Like the love for one another in chapter 30, verse 34 and 35, which is a way for people to see that we belong to Jesus. And like our oneness, our branches nurtured by the vine and tended by the garden of God for our own fullness of joy and love, but also to bear fruit in chapter 15, 1 to 11. The oneness Jesus asks for here among those who believe in him is not an exclusive club but an invitation to the world. An invitation as open, loving, joyful, and fruitful as we can allow ourselves to be. The Greek word translated believe also means trust. Believing in Jesus and in God, for example, is presented in John not as an intellectual exercise, but as being in a trusting relationship of love with someone who embodies God's love for the world and who calls us friend. It is a trusting him that love is the road star of life. It is a prayer for community. 
Jesus prays that all may be one. To be a follower of Jesus is to be a part of a greater whole. According to Jesus, there are to be no solitary Christians or spiritual lone rangers. In that community, the prayer is for unity, that all may be one. Does that, that mean we have to get along together all the time? Does that mean we all have to agree all the time? If one thinks that this is a functional political statement, it would seem to call for a constant agreement and accord. But if one thinks of it more in the ontological term, then it becomes who we are. We are one in Christ, whether we agree with each other or not. We are one in Christ, whether we like one another or not. To become a part of Christ is to become a part of a community, a part of this community, a part of the one. Dear Lord, I know I said I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus died for my sins on the cross and rose again the third day. <coughs> I repent of my sins. By faith, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. You promised to save me, and I believe you, because you are God and cannot lie. I believe right now that the Lord Jesus is my personal Savior that all my sins are forgiven through his precious blood. Thank you, dear Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the wonderful people that we have to share. Thank you for the beautiful church and 